Today I'm going to synthesize ethyl acetate, which is a powerful and water immiscible solvent. I typically use it as a non-toxic alternative to DCM, as it has many of the same properties. To begin the synthesis, I add 100 milliliters of glacial acetic acid and 100 milliliters of anhydrous ethanol to a flask. I then attach an addition funnel filled with 20 milliliters of 95% sulfuric acid and add it dropwise. The addition of sulfuric acid must be done slowly as adding it too fast might cause the ethanol to boil away. Once the addition is complete, I add my mixture to a three-neck boiling flask and attach a reflux condenser. The condenser is filled with ice-cold water and I allow my mixture to reflux at 85 degrees Celsius for around 30 minutes. What's happening here is that the sulfuric acid is catalyzing an esterification reaction between the ethanol and the acetic acid to produce ethyl acetate. The exact mechanisms of what's going on here are kind of complicated, so I've posted them here and you can pause it and give them a look if you're interested. Once the reflux is complete, I reset my system for a standard distillation and heat it to boiling. I'm going to collect all of my distillate that comes over below 100 degrees Celsius, which should be mostly ethyl acetate. This process happens very quickly because low boiling solvents like ethyl acetate tend to distill very quickly. Once the distillation is complete, I transfer my crude ethyl acetate to a separatory funnel and begin my thorough washing process. The first step of the washing process is done with distilled water, which will remove most of the water-soluble impurities. This is followed by two washings with a saturated sodium bicarbonate solution to neutralize any residual acid. In all of these steps, my aqueous layer is going to be my lower layer, as ethyl acetate is a lot lighter than water. That said, since I'm doing a washing here, the lower layer is the one I'm going to drain away. This property is one reason that DCM or chloroform might be preferable to ethyl acetate in certain types of processes. DCM and chloroform are denser than water and will comprise the lower layer in a liquid-liquid extraction. With that one exception, I tend to prefer using ethyl acetate over DCM in any process where it's possible. Another thing to note is that unlike DCM, you can technically purchase ethyl acetate. It's most typically sold as acetone-free nail polish remover or methyl ethyl ketone. The only problem with these solutions is that they also contain a good deal of methyl acetate which would need to be removed by distillation. This can also be skipped though depending on your application as the only problem with methyl acetate is that it's a lot more soluble with water. In any case, looking back to our process here, I just finished my second water rinse and I'm going to do a final rinse with a saturated sodium chloride solution. This final wash will remove any residual water that might be dissolved in the ethyl acetate and leave us with a completely pure and mostly anhydrous ethyl acetate. A second distillation can be done at this point if you need a 100% pure product, but it's really not necessary. In any case, once my sodium chloride aqueous layer is drained off, all I have to do is drain off and collect my ethyl acetate product. My yield here was about 125 milliliters, which represents a 75% yield, which is pretty good for this process. The only way I can think to improve this number is by skipping that second water washing step, but that's pretty much it. I hope you liked this, and follow for more.